everyone, my name is Steph, this is The Novelty Corner and today I have some more recent reads for you. And this video's theme is LGBTQIA plus books and they're mostly romance, well actually no, I think they're all romance stories. I didn't get a chance to do the Queer Lit Readathon which was last week but over the weekend I did spend some time going through some of the books that I had from my TBR that I've been really wanting to read that feature characters who fit along the LGBTQIA plus spectrum which was honestly just delightful. It was a really nice reading weekend. It was also a long weekend here so I had time to just sort of dedicate to spending some time on a theme. I'm really hoping to pick up a few more books this month. It is Pride Month but I try and do that every month anyway because I have so many really wonderful books that I want to read and so many that I didn't get to this weekend but I do have eight to share with you today. And apologies for looking all super cozy in an oversized sweater. It is freezing here today. So we're just, we're going with it. The first two books that I'm going to talk about are books 1 and 1.5 in the Agency series by Ada Maria Soto. And I heard about these books from the Fated Mates podcast. I think Jen was talking about this as a book that had really good asexual representation in it. The books are His Quiet Agent and Merlin in the Library. They are male male romance stories featuring an asexual lead and also a potentially demisexual lead. That character is still questioning whether that label fits him in particular, but it was something that was brought up. These books don't have any steam in them, so beware of that going into it. And they do sort of fit under the romantic suspense umbrella because they are both spies for a secret government agency. His Quiet Agent is a novella and it follows Arthur, who is a very nondescript agent working in this agency. And he goes for a promotion only to be told that basically no one knows who he is and even his bosses had no idea who he is. So he sort of gets a lateral promotion rather than a vertical one. When he moves into a new office, he meets Martin, who has been nicknamed the alien. He is another agent. People don't know very much about him. He doesn't engage with other people. And Arthur is kind of intrigued. And then one day he discovers Martin in his car in the parking lot, unconscious and unwell. And it's Arthur who basically gets security and gets him to a hospital and then decides to try and build some kind of friendship with Martin, which means usually sitting at his table at lunchtime and generally trying to feed him food, even when Martin is not really communicating with him. But eventually Arthur gets underneath Martin's skin and the two do start up this very lovely friendship. And it sort of becomes something more from there on. It's very quiet. It's a very beautiful sort of story. But Martin ends up on an assignment and goes missing and Arthur is out of his mind worried about him and then when Martin comes back he's been severely injured. Arthur again decides to take him under his wing and to nurse him back to health and then Merlin in the library is Martin's perspective after that incident as he tries to get back to his normal life despite the traumatic experiences that he's had which we get hints of through that short story. That one's only 19 or 20 pages long but it was just gorgeous. One of the things that I really loved about this story, aside from the representation, was that aside from their work within this secret government agency, Martin spends a lot of time at the local library with a group of kids and he reads them classical literature, but he is deeply invested in supporting these kids to become more than they are. And he sets very high expectations. He even gives them homework, but they all rise to the occasion, which as a teacher, setting high expectations for kids is actually something that's really important because it gives them something to strive for. I really loved this novella and short story. I thought it was just gorgeous. Then I read Single by RJ Scott, which is Single Dad's book one. This is a male male single dad romance. Ash had always dreamed of having a child and with his previous partner had gone through the process of starting to look at surrogacy and then his partner left him and Ash decided to follow through on that. And now he has baby Mia and he's on his own trying to look after this baby and wondering if he's ever going to have a good night's sleep ever again. And then he meets his next door neighbor, Sean, who is an emergency emergency room doctor. And despite the fact that Ash doesn't think that he has the capacity at the moment to pursue a relationship, Sean is quite insistent and the two end up having this relationship. Nothing overly significant happens in the story. It's a very quiet, very simple, straightforward story. It's very low angst. And as long as you don't mind babies in your stories, then you'll probably enjoy this one. I also read Pink Slip by Katrina Jackson. This is the first book in the Spies Who Loved Her series. It is a polyamorous relationship featuring three characters who are all bisexual. It's also a workplace romance and another spy book. We open with Monica and Lane who both work for the CIA and are in a relationship and came into the agency in a relationship which makes them a very rare sort of breed of person. At the very beginning of the book they are looking to hire a new personal assistant and they end up interviewing this very vibrant 
poet, Kira, who has no experience in being a PA but needs a job. Flash forward three years later and Kira is approaching her last week working with Monica and Lane and the entire time she has had this deep attraction to both of them. There is a lot of flirting that happens between the three of them but nothing has ever come of it. That all changes when Monica and Lane have a new assignment and they need to bring Kira along because they need to pass as a polyamorous couple to bring down their big bad. And of course, despite the fact that this is initially an act, it becomes something more and then it becomes a lot more complicated than that, but it was a really fun ride. It is super, super steamy and I just adored it. I can't wait to continue this series because all of the characters for the future books seem like characters that I'm going to be really excited to read about. This is definitely a really fun read to pick up. I also read Drag Me Up by RM Virtues, which is the first book in the Gods of Hunger series. This is a book that a few people on booktube have been talking about recently. It is a Hades and Persephone retelling with a trans female lead, which was fantastic. And while it's not my favourite Hades and Persephone retelling, it was very interesting. So Hades is known as the Wraith of Chaos Falls. And Chaos Falls is basically a city that is run by a mafia-like group of individuals who are all related or personas of the Greek mythology Pantheon. Obviously Hades is in control of the underworld and has a series of casinos and locations that he is in charge of. And when Persephone, who is an aerialist for a circus performance troupe, a la Cirque du Soleil, but it has a different name, Hades is immediately intrigued by her. And initially Persephone has some reluctance in dealing with Hades but then eventually their paths cross again and they can't deny the fact that there is an attraction between them. The fact that Persephone is trans is not an issue and Hades knows about it in advance. And then of course we get all of the rest of the Greek myth stuff happening like Zeus being an asshole and lots of complicated family dynamics between all of the characters. A lot of the side characters in this were absolutely delightful. Dionysus, or Dio, as he's known in the story, is one of my favourite side characters. This book has a definite mafia feel with everyone in control of different territories within the city. And while I enjoyed it, there were definitely things that kept me out of the story. This story is told in third person, which didn't bother me so much. I was able to switch back into that style of writing relatively easily, but it's been a while since I've read that, so that slowed down the reading process initially. And also, I found that I was predicting what was going to happen next. So when I put my Kindle down, I sort of took me a long time to come back to it. But I did overall enjoy the framework for the story and I think the series is going to be really interesting moving forward. So I'm very curious to see what happens in subsequent books. I also read The Masked Minotaur by Chase Verity. This is another novella. This is a sapphic fantasy romance story. Chase Verity always seems to write wonderfully queer stories and they are just delightful. This is the story of Odelia Astor who had a marriage of convenience in order to save her family's confectionery store five years earlier. She is married to Charlotte who either spends her days sleeping or getting getting drunk at parties and causing scenes that Odelia has to save her from. And while they're married and they get along just fine, they don't have a passionate relationship at all. And often Odelia throws herself into her work. But when bandits begin attacking in local towns and the masked minotaur turns up to save them, Odelia gets swept up in this story and this mystery. And that's until her own store is attacked and then she comes face to face with the Masked Minotaur herself. This was super fun, super short, just a lovely story. And I don't read a lot of fantasy romance much anymore. I don't read much fantasy in general anymore, but I did really like that undertone in here and it was just woven in seamlessly. So it was a lovely novella, well worth checking out. I think it's only like a hundred pages. I also read Out of Character by Annabeth Elbert. This is True Colors book two. This was a NetGalley arc that I had. It comes out at the start of July. It is the follow-up to Conventionally Yours, which was not one of my favorite stories that I read last year or even one of my favorite Annabeth Elbert stories, but I liked it enough that I was curious to see what the follow-up book would be like. It is a new adult MM romance featuring a friends to enemies to lovers situation. So we follow two different characters from the first book and both are college aged and this series follows tabletop card gamers. Milo is not a gamer however he accidentally loses a set of priceless Odyssey cards in a game and the only person he can turn to is his childhood friend Jasper. 
The only problem with this is that once they hit high school and Jasper was out and proud, Milo was a jock and in order to fit in with his crowd, he basically disavowed and then bullied Jasper. And so the two have a very complicated relationship. However, Jasper also needs someone to do him a favor. And so in exchange for tracking down these priceless cards, Jasper gets Milo to agree to come and cosplay as one of the characters from the game at a children's ward in one of the local hospitals. The two end up spending a lot more time together as they try and track down these cards and Jasper learns that people can change and Milo also begins to learn what it means to know who you are and to be proud of who you are and also to know when you've made mistakes and how to acknowledge that and move forward. The core of the story was very interesting and unlike conventionally yours I was hooked from the very first chapter and I wanted to know how this was going to play out between these two characters. I loved the cosplay element, I loved the fact that these characters spent a lot of time volunteering at a local hospital working with children trying to cheer them up. It just added a nice sense of community to the story so I did really enjoy it. I thought it was a step up from the first book. And then the final story that I have to share with you is another novella. This is Waiting for the Flood by Alexis Hall. This is Spies book two and apparently I've decided to read this series backwards because I started with book three and I still haven't read book one yet but this one was a little bit shorter and I was running out of time for this video so I wanted to make sure that I included something by Alexis Hall because I do really enjoy Alexis Hall's writing style. This is another MM romance and this one is about Edwin who has been living in this house in Oxford for the last 12 years and he initially bought it with his then partner Marius who has since left him and Edwin is kind of lost at this point. He doesn't really know what to do moving forward. He restores old books and pieces of ephemera, which I thought was a really lovely touch. And he's also a character who has a stutter and he's very self-conscious about that. And initially he comes across as quite shy in this story, but towards the end we realise it's not shyness, it is that self-consciousness that he may not always be able to get what he wants to say across and that he finds that frustrating. The story opens with Oxford on the eve of flooding. There's big storms coming through and the entire town is preparing for these floods, including trying to flood proof their houses. While this is all happening, Edwin ends up meeting Adam who works for the emergency agency and it's his job to try and minimize the damage done by the floods. And as they begin to spend more time with each other, Edwin ends up having to question and confront how he feels post his previous relationship and why he hasn't moved on. And Adam is just a delightful sweetheart. He was so lovely. And this was just a very gorgeous, quiet story. It's almost like one of those snapshot novellas and I just, I loved it. I really do like Alexis Hall's writing style. So I was very pleased to be able to read one for this video. All right, so those are the eight books that I have read recently featuring LGBTQIA plus characters. I have a whole stack more that I wanna pick up and I've been closely following lots and lots of recommendation lists on Instagram recently. So that list just keeps getting longer and longer. In the comments, let me know if you have read any of these books or if you're planning on picking them up in the future. Or if you wanna let me know that you're here but you don't wanna leave a comment, feel free to leave me a book emoji of any kind. I hope that wherever you are in the world, you're staying safe and healthy and I will see you in my next video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye everyone.